Hi, good morning. It's Gene from the Math Star Observatory. Guys, before we get into it, big thanks to those few people that are supporting us. And, you know, it is through you guys that we are where we are today. And it's on that subject uh, that we're going to talk about what we do at the Math Star Observatory and where we've come from. So I know a lot of you hardcore supporters have been following me for probably seven or eight years on YouTube. And at that point, we used to just talk about these anomalies. And, um, you know, I've got to say, you know, I remember uh, 2012 coming and going. And I was caught up with uh, the Mayan prophecy. And if you guys have ever uh, familiarized yourselves with the Mayan prophecy, it was supposed to mean something was going to happen around about 2012. But we don't quite know what that was because the edge of the stone where the date is mentioned was broken away. So, you know, I think it inspired me a little to have a look at what was taking place because I know a lot of people with the Mayan prophecy thought the world was going to come to an end. And, you know, if you remember when we rolled over to the year 2000, uh, everyone was frightened back then about the Y2K bug. Uh, apparently some of the computers weren't configured to accept uh, the new millennium and as a result they expected some of the computers to crash but you know we got through it and you know like I say the Mayan date 2012 come and went with hardly anything noticeable um, we don't quite know other than speculate what the Mayan prophecy was all about and we can all guess and a lot of people thought you know it is curtains for everyone you know the world is going to end but for me, it inspired me to have a look at what really could possibly affect us and what is taking place right now in our time that could affect us down the road. And it didn't take long for me to come across the fact that this Earth was going through a magnetic reversal and it was a rare event. 780,000 years ago, the Earth went through a completed magnetic reversal and we have no recorded data of this event and here we are today and it is accepted by all mainstream organizations like NASA, NOAA, uh, the British Geological Survey there it is widely accepted that we are going through a magnetic reversal and hardly ever does it get a mention in mainstream media and you know we started to look into it in fact you know only a couple of years ago uh, or maybe four years ago now, I know it took a couple of years to develop the Trimax system because I had to teach myself electronics and building electronic components and programming them, uh, that we got the Trimax system online, which is a system of free magnetometers that measures the um, exact location of the magnetic north pole over the northern hemisphere. And we then adapted uh, the program to focus mainly on, you know, uh, just the X, Y components of the intensity of magnetism and we built these magnetosphere sensors and you know we monitor the strength of the Earth's magnetic field because during a reversal the magnetic field that protects us the magnetosphere reduces in strength and we've discovered that during a process of reversals um, you know we have a certain amount of risks and we've looked at you know how the uh, risks now are leading to you know some dramatic changes in our climate as well as you know uh, the fact that they can alter the cardiac arrhythmosis of your heartbeat and cause cancer as a result of inbound cosmic radiation it's not just um, the earth and the magnetosphere that are weakening at this point we are also unfortunately in a time where our sun is going into a solar minimum and for the last three solar cycles which last 11 years each it is slowly decayed the activity of the sun's output with regards to sunspots and as a result of that the heliosphere which the sun inflates which is like an invisible bubble all over our solar system which covers all the planets in our solar system has started to reduce and to the tune where you know even when we have a solar maximum now, like solar cycle 24, during the maximum around 2015, we had very little protection at that maximum point. 
which is an indication that the sun has crept into an all-time low. Uh, the last recorded time this happened was, you know, described as the Maunder minimum. And uh, as a result of that, you know, it coincided with times where the Earth was cooler. Um, I'm not saying that the sunspots called the climate of the Earth, but during a period of after 50 years of the Earth already calling the sunspots fall in line with that time. And we don't know whether the sun spots and the activity of the sun is driving climate here on Earth, but what we do know for sure through the research that we've conducted here at the Mass Star Observatory is we know that it does weaken and increase the amount of um, cosmic radiation that we have inbound in our atmosphere. As a result, the cosmic particles collide with upper atmospheric gases and molecules and smash them and we have a byproduct of these collisions called muons, which is what we are now uh, building and distributing along with the magnetometers that we've got already in the field, which covers America, Australia, Hong Kong, and very shortly to be in Brazil, Africa, and other countries, uh, along with the muon detectors, because we really want to know what risks we face when the inevitable happens and it is going to, without a doubt, happen. We are going to have a further increase of 25% weakening of the magnetosphere. It could go down to 5 or even 10% at its weakest point. And at that point, we will be inundated with more cosmic radiation as a result of two things coming into um, cycle. First of all, the grand solar minimum and the Earth going through a magnetic reversal. And that is what we have focused on with our observatory and our YouTube channel. And I say to you guys, you know, you know, we do a lot, lot more than talk here. You know, over the next few days, we've got just a couple more components to come and we will be assembling more magnetometers and more muon detectors. And, you know, it's not cheap. I could never have done it without the support from the people that have supported us here at the observatory. Um, over the last few years so you know we're, we're not just uh, talking we're more proactive we're building and we're collecting data and we're relaying that information as we get it back to you guys and we've just or near enough ended the, one of the worst months of uh, collecting support you know in order for us to you know purchase the stuff that we need January um, December and November are our worst months and we've just about scraped through. I've had to spend uh, just over £400 uh, this week in order to get some of the things and um, you'll see this in the next couple of videos you know, it's it's not just about buying magnetometer chips and buying Arduinos and buying cases, there's a lot of other things that go, you know, into those magnetometers like wires um, standoffs, PCBs Lots and lots of things go into into it. It's not just a case of putting a couple of things together. And it's also, you know, the ongoing improvements of the program um, and adjusting the program and trying to make this thing uh, better all the time. So that, you know, it in turn makes it easier for the people that have these magnetometers uh, in their homes and makes it easier for them to get the data to us. So there's always work going on here. And you know, it, it is a real shame because we barely make enough money at the end of the month to support a single person's wage. It, it doesn't even come into the category of uh, minimum wage here. So, you know, a lot of the money that we get goes back out into equipment, time, you know, and, you know, even, even when it comes down to sending these things out, when you're sending parcels out internationally, um, you know, you're charged 20 odd pounds. It might not seem a lot of money, but, you know, if you've got to, every other week, send out a box, you know, a magnetometer or something like that, these mount up these little things do, and, you know, really, really slows everything down when we don't get the support. So, I hope, you know, in this little video, uh, you know, you've got a bit of understanding what we do. Uh, obviously, you're looking at um, the Pulse Shift News website, which is dedicated to all of the data that we collect and share with you guys. But there's also a lot of other stuff on there. If you're interested in the Schumann frequency, uh, satellite live images every day, um, sea surface temperature, volcanic activity, earthquakes, and 
data from other magnetometer stations around the world it's all on our website and let's not forget there's some good solar uh, data which is again always updated every day and you know when we collect data from our stations in uh, Kentucky, Southern California, Hong Kong, Perth Australia and the Gold Coast Australia you know it all goes back up onto the website for you guys to see it first hand and whether it's good news or bad news we deliver it as it should be because you know what we're all adults we can handle it if it's bad news we don't need to sugarcoat nothing so you know I'm gonna leave it here guys with just a brief mention of our link to the PayPal and Patreon account if you want to become a supporter or you want to um, help support what we do uh, on a regular basis the links are there you know all is I can say is you know this is a rare time that we live in and the consequences are real and we are dealing with real uh, anomalies that have uh, the possibility to you know dramatically change the way human beings and all the other biodiversities on this planet go about their business so the link is there if you want to help support you know a little observatory like ours with a small donation it's simply up to you and with that guys i will say i'll catch up with you uh over the weekend and you know other than that have a great day as always bye for now